Christmas time is a time where punches and wassail, these specialized cooked beers, sort of take a really big amount of interest in time out of a lot of people's planning. And in our case, we actually already addressed a single serving variant of that that I called Christmas time punch. But today, we're actually going to go ahead and take a book out of the Tasting History Cookbook and make Victoria Punch on day 25, 22, <laughs> 22 of 25 Drinks of Christmas, otherwise known as the episode where I steal all of Max Miller's IP. Now, while I may be entirely impatient uploading this late and may not have the charisma, personality, or aging hardtack of Max Miller, I definitely do have a pension for some of the recipes he's made over the years, and that includes Victoria Punch. Now, the unfortunate part about this episode is that I actually can't make this in front of you. It actually requires at least 24 hours plus some extra time to finish it to make. And that means that you're gonna hear me voice over a bunch of footage that I took yesterday and earlier today while I was waiting for this to finish. You'll need a couple different ingredients, most of which I won't be able to visually show you, but it includes uh, brandy, Jamaican rum, uh, lemons, sugar, water, and milk, which is a pretty common thing with old school punches. You'll find the amounts you need all in the description. To start off, 24 hours before you finish the punch, you're going to want to take uh, the brandy and your rum, which should be Jamaican rum. In this case, I used uh, Bacardi Black because I didn't want to go through my nice Jamaican rum so fast, uh, and steep those in with a single cut lemon. That has to take 24 hours to steep to get the flavors of the lemon into the brandy and the rum and sort of coalesce. Once 24 hours has passed, you can go ahead and stop your steeping by what I did was pull out all of the lemons actually, so I can continue to use the same container, and add in uh, two third cups of water, half a cup of, no, excuse me, a quarter cup of sugar, and then two third cups of boiling milk. Might seem really odd because you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, there's lemon in this. That's an acid. That will make the milk curdle, won't it? Yes, it will. It's actually kind of a good thing because the basic principle of what's happening there is an acid and a base reacting. The milk is basic, the citrus from the lemons is acidic. They coalesce into the milk curdling, but what that does is sort of neutralize the pH of the drink and make it sort of creamy by introducing lactose proteins and ultimately making a smoother and notably clarified drink. Once you've allowed your uh, milk to curdle, stirring it in and making sure that sugar gets incorporated, you're going to want to strain it out into a different vessel. Uh, I used um, a funnel with its own built-in sort of uh, filter and then a coffee filter as well. That was really slow because what ends up happening is a lot of very large curds end up sitting at the bottom of the filter and it slows down the process and it makes extra time. I think I've been waiting hour and a half at least for this to finish. Um, what I ended up doing instead was double straining it by initially putting it through a cocktail strainer and then allowing only the finer particles of the curds that would get caught by the coffee filter to rest inside. That meant it went a little bit faster and it meant that I had a clearer product because it was done essentially double strained at that point. What you end up getting out of all of that is essentially, I think, the same, uh, the same volume of brandy water and I think even milk in a ready-to-serve punch. Now, I believe this is a Jeffrey Morgenthau recipe for Victoria Punch, uh, and he says you can serve it warm or cold. So, I'm gonna put some over ice. Just about any glass will do, but I'm gonna use a double rocks glass. For just such an occasion as well, I have prepared some petals. Let's go ahead and pour over some of our Victoria Punch, which has taken an incredibly long time to finish, and Salut. Oh, that's fascinating. So like I said, because we put the boiling milk in there alive with the curdle and the, the base and the acid sort of react together, it creates a really smooth mouthfeel. I think I might've used too little milk, maybe a full cup is necessary here, as it still feels kind of pronounced and in, in, in my face. That said, it carries this sort of sweetened, essence of lemon, brandy, and rum collectively 
And in the episode, which I'll link down below of Tasting History, where uh, Max Miller makes this, he describes it as kind of like a Mai Tai. And I actually had a Mai Tai yesterday in preparation for this, just to refresh myself of what the palate of that is like. And he's right. It actually is somewhat like a Mai Tai. It doesn't carry any notes of like, her show. I'm not getting almond necessarily. But the way the rum, the brandy, the lemon, probably the lactose element and the sweetness of it kind of coalesce, it tastes kind of like that. Although with a less pronounced uh, citrus note because we used limes instead of lemons. There's also no, there's no orange in it, but there's something about what we've done here that does make it read kind of like orange. So yeah, maybe a single serving clarified Mai Tai. I don't know. It really is fascinating. Um, something that I wasn't sure I would like. I'm still not entirely certain that I do, but it's also not bad. And I'm kind of surprised by that. <laughs> the thing is, it is still quite proofy. Most of what is in there is booze. Uh, and as a result, it is pretty heavy. I imagine this would be just south of uh, a neat pour of rum or brandy. Um, so the stuff I used, I believe, was all 40%. So this is probably ballpark tw high 20, high to mid to high 20s, maybe, maybe even in the 30s. Um, I'm not entirely certain what percent ABV this is, but it'll get the job done. Is it a crowd pleaser? No, I don't think so. But is it definitely something interesting to bring to a party? Yeah, definitely. And what I'm a little bit more interested in is how well does it mix? Would this function as an interesting mixer? Let's find out. I don't have my preferred shaker clean at the moment, so I'm gonna have to use this piece of chunk re, re reduce shaker. I fucking hate this thing. Don't buy these. It's a vacuum. It's a vacuum wall shaker. Just, just, just don't mess with those. They suck. I'm gonna go ahead and make a daiquiri with this because the rum and brandy base with those notes of citrus, I think, will be really interesting. And I want to know if it stands up and is improved by some additional ingredients. My strainer is dirty, so I'm just gonna strain this straight in. It looks just like a regular daiquiri, actually, which is fascinating. Let's see how it tastes, though. Holistically, unimpressive. <laughs> it tastes like a daiquiri. I don't think I'm getting any of the complexity of this punch in there. It kind of washes it all over, because lime and sugar as a combination is really a lot. And I think it's kind of overpowering the more subtle notes that are present in this punch. I mean, if you look for it, it's there. It does feel smoother on the mouth than I think a regular daiquiri would be. But I don't think it's lending anything substantial to the flavor of it. It's a nice daiquiri, don't get me wrong, but this is also just a daiquiri. I'm, I'm finding a hard time realizing whether or not the brandy is making an impact here compared to just regular rum. So I think what I would really have to do is do a daiquiri AB. I don't really have time for that right now. So we'll call it done here. But if you're interested in the history of Victoria Punch and in, in essence, actually, uh, the history of sugar in the new world, go ahead and click the link down below. There's a link to Max Miller's video. Max, if you end up seeing this for some reason, I'm a huge fan of your show. I can't wait to receive a copy of your cookbook, which I'm going to pre-order once Christmas is over and my pocketbook has recovered. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Little Ram Shackle, very late upload, but hey, I, I, was, I was busy fixing all this stuff together. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Come back tomorrow where we're going to make a single serving eggnog, actually. So see you there. Have a good night. Intrusive thoughts won this battle. Now it just tastes like lemonade. But like if it had brandy in it. Not bad.